The next comment of the night comes from White Shoe Princess, who had this take on marijuana legalization. Marijuana is said to have great uses as medicine, and I do believe this is true. However, even if you didn't agree with this, you should still agree that it should be good to legalize this plant. It would help to stop crimes of violence committed because of the fact that it's illegal, and it would make it much less profitable to sell. The reason it will create jobs is because it will enable farmers to grow hemp. Hemp is a plant related to the marijuana plant, but it's not really used for smoking. This is what paper used to be made of. If we went back to using hemp for the production of paper, it would create jobs manufacturing paper, which practically everyone uses, and it would help save thousands of trees from being chopped down at the same time. It grows fast, and there are just literally so many uses for it. Yes, you're absolutely right. In fact, there's one kind of grand conspiracy theory that pot and hemp were made illegal back in the, in the 1920s, 19, you know, from the aughts through the 20s and 30s, in large part because Henry Ford's first car ran on alcohol, and uh, there were also several people who were making cars that ran on diesel, all of which was made from hemp. Not only that, the paper manufacturers and the cotton folks were, were you know, having some rough times economically in the 1920s, and hemp was a major competitor for them. So get rid of hemp, get rid of pot, you know, it, it, gave, it, it just, and pot was competing with alcohol, so it, was, it seemed like a good idea, at least from business's point of view back then, it would be a good idea to decriminalize both now. It's the good, the bad, and the very, very pergamenously ugly, the good. Beto O'Rourke, the Democratic candidate, beat Congressman Sylvester Reyes in the Texas Democratic primary last night, becoming the third outside challenger to beat an incumbent this primary season. Congressman Reyes has been plagued by corruption scandals, specifically over benefits his family received from his political connections, and has received thousands of dollars in contributions from the military industry and other big businesses. On the other hand, O'Rourke ran on a platform of cleaning up Congress and also supports marijuana legalization and sensible drug policies. Corrupt lawmakers, whether Democrats or Republican, need to be removed from Washington if America is going to get back on track. The bad. Massachusetts Senator Scott Brown. Locked in a heated battle with Elizabeth Warren for Ted Kennedy's former Massachusetts Senate seat, Republican Brown released a new campaign ad yesterday. Take a look. Hey, Scott. What's up? The problem with Washington is that people down there are always battling. That's not how I operate. We're Americans first, and I'll work with anyone to get things done. I was the tie-breaking vote on Wall Street reform, led the way in a jobs bill for veterans, and helped pass a strong new ethics law for Congress. You know what makes me really proud? Being called one of the most bipartisan senators in the country. You deserve another cup. I'm Scott Brown, and I approve this message. Paid for by Scott Brown for U.S. Senate. So what's wrong with this picture? Well, despite saying he was the tie-breaking vote on Wall Street reform, and I suppose any senator could make that claim, Brown has taken thousands in donations from Wall Street and big bankster financial institutions. This is just another misinformation campaign coming from the right. And the very, very ugly Florida Governor Rick Scott. Despite being busy throwing thousands of eligible voters off the state's voting rolls, Governor Scott is still finding time to destroy Florida's environment and punish those who are trying to protect it. Connie Bursuck, the state's top wetlands expert, was suspended last week after she denied a permit to a company for a controversial and destructive business development project in Florida's wetlands. Of course, Governor Scott is all about protecting the interests of big business, so Bursock's actions had to be punished. With his war on voting, his massive cuts to education, and now his attacks on his own state's environment? Governor Scott is single-handedly trying to destroy the state of Florida and ruin the lives of Floridians. And that is very, very ugly.